Hey everybody, this is Michael Ray. Today we're going to learn about seek lists and how we can prioritize leads to call based on dynamic scenarios. So what is a seek list? Seek list is a noun. It's a dynamic calling list which rebuilds itself hourly to search out all records meeting a certain set of criteria in multiple queries. So how are seek lists going to make your sales reps more effective? There's a few things that seek lists can do. First off, they can help automate a contact cadence. And they'll present reps with the leads you want them to call when you want them to call them. Seeklists will eliminate rep emotion as they move from one lead to the next. And they'll allow reps to make more calls by reducing the time spent searching for the next record to dial. So what is the Seeklist philosophy? You know, with the Seeklist, we're going to call our most urgent leads first then work our way down to our high, medium, and low priority leads. So we're calling the most important leads first every time. Let's walk through a scenario to see how to build a basic seek list, following just a few basic criteria. So in this scenario, Accelerate Corp has five lead sources. Four are warm and one is cold. They want to call their leads nine times, wait 24 hours between each attempt, and the agent should only call leads that they own. They want to call those with the warm leads that have zero dials as the top priority. And then warm lead sources should be called in the order listed below. The cold lead source should be called last. So let's walk through how we would build this seek list in Salesforce. We will begin on the inside sales tab. If you'll notice in the top left hand corner, we have two different types of dialing lists, domino lists and seek lists, static lists and dynamic lists. We'll go ahead and click on seek lists. On this view you can see any lists that you have already created and you have the ability to launch those directly from here. We're going to create a new list for a business development team. We'll click on new seek list. First thing that we do, we will give our list a name. After we've given our list a name, we'll set the default caller ID for the list. You have four options. The company phone, referencing the company phone in Salesforce, a custom number, local presence, or the rep station phone. I'm going to go ahead and click local presence. The next setting is limit calling times. We have the options of business hours, consumer hours, or none. None will allow for no constraint to win we're calling records. We hover over the little information icon here. We can see the business hours are between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. and consumer hours are between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. What this means is that we will call records when based on the area code of their phone number it falls in this category. If, it, if we're on the East Coast and we have it set to business hours and it's 8 o'clock in the morning I will be calling records in the Eastern Time Zone. A record from California, for instance, with a Pacific Time Zone area code will not be brought in for a couple hours later until it meets that criteria. And we can set the time between calls. This is the time before we attempt to call the same record again. There are several different options ranging from one hour to 30 days. In this scenario, we want to call in one day. If you have Neuralytics, you can turn Neural Sort on or off right here. That will be covered in a future video. We'll go ahead and turn that off in this example. Then we have the ability to use Salesforce email templates within the Power Dialer. This will specify which email template folders will be available to the reps. I'm going to select my BDR email templates and add that here to the right hand column. Then the last setting that we have is assigning users. We can determine who can see this list. It can be only me, the person creating it. It can be visible to all InsideSales.com users or visible to just certain groups of users. I want my BDR team to be the ones that can see this, so I will say visible to certain groups of users. And then I can select this by role. I will select the role of business development, add that, and then I am complete. So now we set the basic settings for our seek list. The next step is to set our dialing rules, which will determine which leads are brought in to this list. So what we're going to do 
we will hit quick save. We'll have a new rule at the bottom where we will begin setting these rules. First thing we need to do is we need to set a name for the first dialing rule. In this case, we want this to bring in our zero dial warm lights. So we'll just call it just that. And then we will set the time block in which we want this query to run. I want this to run all day when my reps are going to be in the office. They arrive at 7 o'clock and the last one leaves at 7 p.m. And then I will click add a new rule. You may notice that the pop-up blocker stopped this from viewing. If, if you don't see the pop-up, go ahead and click always allow pop-ups and done. Once this pop-up is open, this is where we will set the individual settings for this dialer rule. First thing is, we will give it a name. This is the name that we just gave it there before. It will automatically populate, so that's fine. We can select what object we want to call on. We're going to work off leads. You do have the option to build your dialer rules off of leads, contacts, accounts, or opportunities. I can set specific calling hours for this dialer rule. If I leave it blank, it will default to the calling hours that we set on the seek list setting. I will just leave that blank. The next setting is limit calls to. Limit calls defaults to no limit, which means that any rep in this list can call any record. In my scenario here, I would like to have only the owner of the record call, so I will set this to record owner. I can set the dials are between. I can select from either drop down. I want just my zero dial leads, so I will say between zero and zero. And then I will set my filters. The first filter that I want to set is the lead source. So I'll come under field and scroll down until I find lead source. I'll select lead source. I want that to be equal to. And then I'll come over here to my lookup icon and I will select all of my lead sources that are my warm sources. I know from the chart on the previous slide that the purchase list is a cold source, so we'll leave that off. We'll click Insert Selected, and then we'll set our lead status. We'll scroll down, we'll find status is equal to, we want it to be new, attempting contact, or appointment missed. And we'll hit Insert Selected. You can have up to five different filters on each dialing rule. Once we've set all of our dialing rules, we can move on to our record sort. This tells us what order we want the records to come into the dialer. Since we're dealing with just our zero dial leads, we want to have the ones that are the absolute newest, the freshest, and we'll sort those by created date, descending. That will take the newest records first and give us the oldest records last. Once we're done setting our sorts, we can click View Query Results to get an idea of what records will come in, or we can just click Save and Close. Now that I've met our first criteria to get our zero dial warm leads into the list as the top priority, we begin working on our second priority. The first lead source that we want to have come in will be our website request quotes lead source. So what I will do, I will create a new dialer rule name and click Add New Rule. The default object is lead, which we're working on, so we'll just leave that right there. We don't need to change the calling hours, just like in our previous query. We will limit our calls to the record owner. And here we will set dials are between 1 and 8. We leave that at 8 instead of 9, because when that comes in with 8 dials, we make that ninth attempt, and then it falls off, so we don't make a tenth attempt it no longer will qualify for this list after that ninth dial has been placed. In our filters, we will first set the lead source. We'll set the equal to website request a quote and click insert selected. And then we will select our second filter, which will be status. Status will be equal to, just like before, new attempting contact and appointment missed. And we'll insert selected. Now we're going to use a little bit of a different sort criteria here on these. First thing we're going to sort on is going to be dials. And we're going to do dials ascending. So that means our records that only have one dial will come in before the records that have seven dials. 
Then we will use the last call time sort, and we will do that one descending. So that means that the oldest one dial lead will come first, and the newest eight dial lead will come last. And then we'll go ahead and hit save and close. Once we've created a dialer rule for the first lead source, we can use the clone link to clone that rule to save us a lot of time. We'll go ahead and click clone. Once we have cloned the dialer rule, we'll see it down here. We'll go ahead and click edit. First thing we're going to do is we're going to change the name. The only other thing that we need to change on this is our lead source. So we'll come back over here to our lookup button. We will select the one that we want and we will click insert selected. Then we will hit save and close. Once we have successfully cloned a dialer rule, we will continue down through our remaining lead sources, including the cold lead source. I'll go ahead and do that and I'll skip ahead. Now that we have cloned all of our dialing rules for each of our individual lead sources, there's just one last setting. That's this checkbox down here near the bottom. It's called Show Agents the Names of the Queries Used to Pull Records into the Power Dialer. This will show reps, if this is checked, the name of each of these dialer rules next to the name of the record they're calling, so they can know why those were pulled in. Works great in a scenario where we are bringing in individual lead sources like this. We want them to be able to see what the lead sources are. In the case that you are bringing in really old leads to reps and you do not want them to know that they are dialing on really old leads, it's best to leave this unchecked. Once we have completed this and determined what we want that setting to be, we will go ahead and hit save, and then we will end up back here at the Seek List page. Now this list is ready to be dialed. All we need to do is click Launch. Thank you for joining us today for our basic Seek List training. Stay tuned for more Seek List videos, including a training on advanced Seek List strategies. If you need more information, please visit our community site at community.insidesales.com. If you need immediate assistance, call our support team toll-free at 866-593-2807.